Now, everybody is sad when their side loses an election. But the day after, we have to remember that we're actually all on one team. This is an intramural scrimmage. We're not Democrats first, we're not Republicans first, we are Americans first. Hi, I'm Nell Sanders and this is Tell It Like It Is, where all things controversial are covered. The biggest headlines in our country and potentially around the world occurred on Tuesday last week when Republican candidate Donald Trump was voted the 45th President of the United States, beating Hillary Clinton. I pledge to every citizen of our land that I will be President for all Americans. For those who have chosen not to support me in the past, of which there were a few people, <laughs> I'm reaching out to you for your guidance and your help so that we can work together and unify our great country. Republicans are now in control of the presidency, the Senate, and the House. America proved Tuesday that drastic change is wanted and needed. However, not everyone was celebrating Trump's victory Wednesday morning. Major protests have popped up across the country in cities, college campuses, and certain towns, including a local protest in Springfield, Massachusetts this past weekend. One of the biggest concerns of the election results is the increase in hate crimes towards minorities, Muslims, and the queer community, inspired by Trump's rhetoric during his campaign. However, since Tuesday, many of his harshest and most controversial policies have either been removed from his website or modified. Trump is faced with the difficult task of uniting our divided country. I interviewed students and teachers on their opinion of the election results. Trump has won, and he has the House and the Senate, so... Let's just say the last time that happened, the Great Depression happened, so things could be quite bad. There's been a lot of uh, policies and certain things he's, you know, said and that he's really just not been uh, I don't know, hard set on. As my family and I sat around and watched the Republican debates all the time, we often were like, hey, that was a good point that you brought up. Like, and we just assumed that he wasn't going to make it all the way. I thought, I thought America could have done better with picking candidates. I also think that being an independent gives you a great opportunity to really see both sides. Yeah. I don't think anything bad, severely bad, is going to happen. Um, the way our government is set up with our checks and balances, I don't think that it's necessary to dwell on this election because Regardless, we're going to get change within the next four years. I think that the polling data that certain groups did was accurate and the polling data that certain groups did was inaccurate. So with this election, it looks like the de voting demographics shifted and they misread, they misread a certain segment of the population in places that they assumed were blue that really weren't blue. I have a couple of friends that are pollsters and their data from the states that they thought would have gone blue that went red was incorrect and they said, you know, we talked to these voters who we think voted for Donald Trump. We thought they were Hillary Clinton voters and they think they just weren't truthful. That's with any survey method, you're, you're running a risk of error. As a liberal town, it is hard to accept the results of the election. But at the end of the day, America voted Trump as president, and we have to move forward. What we have to do is respectfully engage in dialogue with people who have different opinions. We have to strive to understand and continue to fight for our beliefs by fighting fairly without stooping to a lower level. Again, I'm Nell Sanders, and this was Tell It Like It Is.